Jeremy, you, you proposed to me an interesting idea for a business you want to start. Now, what is it called again, and what is it about? So get this. It is a, it's an edible company, cannabis edibles for dogs. Right. And what's it called? Dog Days. Welcome to the Maven Show. I am Aaron Hoffman. With me, Josh Malone, Yo. Jeremy Brown. Hello. We're with Maven Real Estate. Welcome to this episode of the Maven Show. Um, mm. Glad you all could join us this wonderful day. Excited to have you here. Yeah, terrific. So, welcome uh, to get us started. Yeah. So, um, Josh wanted to kick us off with a question. He'd actually you'd receive this from somebody on. We're, we're gonna Facebook, start. We're gonna start a little, uh, a little segment, uh, the Maven Mailroom, something like that. Sure. Is that, is that? Yeah. Yeah, that works. So, um, yeah, I got a question on Facebook after uh, putting out some of the clips and things that we did from episode one. I uh, thought it was a really good question. Thought it was something that uh, we could kind of all speak to uh, from quite a bit of experience. So, uh, the question uh, was, uh, "Hey Josh, I've been seeing several of your posted videos and the phrase." learning about business struck home with me. What are the top books or resources that you've discovered in your pursuit of this that you would recommend? So and what did he say uh, struck a chord with him? What was it? Uh, the importance of learning about business, like whatever you do, study business was uh, kind of the, the banner or whatever. Yeah, right. the video. yeah. So I wanted to ask you guys, I, I know what my answer is. I wanted to ask you guys, what uh, are the top books or resources that you've discovered about business. Mm. Yeah. There's a, I feel like there's a lot of places we could go with this. I don't know why books haven't necessarily been, mm. I mean, I don't, for me personally, it's mm. not like I've, I've, I've done I don't a read lot them. more. I do audio books, but yeah. Audio books. I've done some, but it's been more, it's a lot of just, um, content I find online, like videos, especially videos. Yeah. So many videos that are available regarding this. Tons of YouTube stuff. Yeah. Tons of YouTube Lots stuff. Lots of YouTube yeah. So, and most of it can be, it's free. Right. It's running for free. Right. So for me, a lot of what's, it's hard to say like, this is just limited to business, but like a big part of, for me, it was influential was Tony Robbins. And it kind of mm -hmm. all started with like, I, I remember Josh, like you would talk about Tony Robbins, like as the why guy. And I had, I thought I knew you were talking about, and then come to find out, I had no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> And then that whole, I'm not your guru thing came on Netflix. Oh yeah. And then we right. all watched that. And then that, and then from there it was like, just like down the rabbit hole of Tony Robbins. But a lot of like for him, what was influential to me in just like bettering myself in business was like, um, it's all about like you take different actions, you get different results. And I don't know, I was stuck in like a really bad place mentally of like, you know, you're just kind of, I don't know if it's like my Calvinistic background or whatever, but it's just like, you are who you are. You're stuck. You're stuck the way you are. And like for him, like that different actions gets different results. Like you can actually practice, you can get better at something. You're not just as like, if you're bad at something now, it doesn't mean you necessarily have to be bad at it tomorrow. Like you can build a skill set. You can build a skill set. You can, you can become different you can get better. Well, what um, was, yeah, I was going to say, what was your perspective on it previously? I mean, it almost kind of sounds like it was more, you had a tendency to just kind of accept the world the way that it was. And it yeah. was like, Hey, this is my circumstance. This is. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely defined by circumstances yeah. and like a very victimhood mentality. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Um, I remember like a very specific conversation that you and I had about like, it was like about phone calls and like calling people. And, <laughs> and I was yeah. like, um, you know, it's like, I'm thinking about practicing my script more. Was calm. a scripting thing? Yeah, I was I like, I'm going to practice, too. just practice talking by myself, like, every night. And I was like, ah, well, that's kind of dumb. And you were, and I thought, <laughs> I thought you were going to, you are like, you were offended by it. Um, <laughs> yeah. right, rightfully so, rightfully so. Um, and, like, that was, like, he definitely, like, preaches that, reaffirmed that, and encouraged me to, like, no, actually, you can change your your outcomes by changing what you do every day. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of. I bet we're going to talk about a lot of these guys uh, where so many of them start with like this pers- this perspective shift. Like mentally, there's something that switches in your head. Yeah. yeah. Where, and it isn't. It's not like a feeling based thing that leads you to do the next step or right. take the next action that you're supposed to. How does he even, I, I, now I even said the word action. It made me think of Tony. What was it like? Radical action, massive action, massive, massive action. action. Yeah. Yes. That was yeah. something he talked about so much. I remember that, but it was yeah. like uh, so many of these guys um, that we're going to talk about. I'm sure they, they developed this idea of switching your perspective and your mentality, like from the get Yeah, as crucial yeah um but yeah tony was i think for all of us that's actually really interesting was well it's interesting the massive action piece for me came from a guy who you know better or worse as far as if people like him or whatever but uh grant cardone and his whole like 10x thing and, and and how his whole thing was like taking 10 times the amount of action that you were taking so that you would actually hit your your goals yeah he was like take your goal what you think you have to do to hit it multiply it by 10 and then try to hit that. And then you'll actually make sure you hit your goal. And uh, for me, that was like, oh, okay. I can actually try a lot harder <laughs> and oh, put in a yeah. lot more effort. Um, but then you got guys like um, oh. Gary Vaynerchuk. Yep. Um, and uh, it's funny because my answer of like, what's the most influential book is, is different. But his, uh, there's like a, a video where he talks about like hustle. And it's interesting because he got kind of famous off this video largely. Like a lot of people, this was their introduction to him. Yeah. And he kind of didn't like how much he became like the hustle guy <laughs> eventually. Cause like, no, you can have a life too. But um, for me, it was literally like every day I would wake up and watch that for, for a period of like three months or something like that while getting started. It's just like a super short clip or something. Oh yeah. yeah it's like, like a two, it's three like minute two clip. or three minutes clip, but yeah. it'll okay. get you like, yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it's, but it's all about like, how do you actually execute? So to me, hustle would be putting all your effort into achieving the goal at hand. And for me, that means making every minute count. So look, you need a break, good. Get your break, but the bottom line is every minute that you can apply to your game, you need to. I worry that people don't tap into their strengths. I think that people like to claim that they work hard and smart, but they're not putting in the work and they work nine to six. It's just not enough. Hustle is waking up one day, the day before you die, and realizing you gave it your all into the parenting of your children, the building of your businesses, the philanthropy that you wanted to do. Whatever you define, it's just you know all in, emotionally and executionally, in theory and strategy and in execution. Because I think one of the one of the draws for a lot of people in business is they think about all the things that they could possibly create. They think about all the potentials, all the ideas, all the different, uh, yeah. like anybody who's talking about entrepreneurship. And while, yeah, that's a piece of it, it's actually like such a tiny piece. Like having a good idea is yeah. such a small piece, right? Like, for example, we've talked about having a podcast for how many years? <laughs> Tried once or twice? <laughs> yeah. Haven't really executed on it until right. now. Right. Yeah. It, what actually matters is executing on good ideas. If you don't execute, none of it matters. And, and, and it was a big, it was a big, uh, and we'll get into this some too. Like it was a big, uh, temptation for me early on in the business where I was such an idea guy and such like a hype man excited about like, okay, what are we going to do? And what are we creating here that I would think all the time about ideas that was actually a big hindrance in many ways to actual execution and getting where we needed to go. Yeah. Cause I just be thinking about new ideas instead of executing on the existing ones that are just got hard. Mm-hmm. Um, which obviously you have to be creative and you have to be thinking about all this stuff, but yeah. So that Cardone was actually the one who gave me the whole like massive action thing or, you know, Gary V with the hustle kind of stuff. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, they all have, I mean, they all have similarities. It was actually very interesting. There's an interview where, uh, Tony's, uh, Tony's doing, he's being interviewed by Gary V mm-hmm. he's being interviewed by him. And they're talking about like getting your mental state, correct. Like from the get starting a day. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Tony goes <laughs> into this big elaborate, th- and this just talks about how people, I think people, they, when they look for answers regarding, okay, let's formulate getting into a business, working independently. How do you structure this? You want to start your own company. You want to really, you want to figure this out. Yeah. And I, th- I think there's a 
tendency to think that there is one particular, either like a personality type way that you have to get to, um, or that business is more, maybe it's the best way to say it is like business is more prone toward these types of personality traits versus these types of personality traits. Right. And it's like, there may be some truth to it, but then you have a guy like Tony who mm. to get his mind right when he starts a day and he talks about this in this interview with Gary Vee, he's like, okay, if I'm going to start my day, I'm going to start with like these deep breathing exercises. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. Right. Definitely. Right. Breathing and meditation. Priming. Right. He's right. going to prime. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So he talks about that and he goes through it and he talks about like getting his mental state correct. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's, uh, maybe you can help me with remember a couple other pieces of this, but it was like mem remembering these, um, like affirmations or affirmations. Like, yeah. Really there was like like affirmations, affirmations yeah. Talking about, right? Visualizations. And, right. And so yeah. he goes through that because somebody had asked on that show, just like, how do you get in the right place every day when, cause it's a, it can be a struggle. Right. And he goes through that. And then Gary, of course that's his Gary's answer. Like Gary totally. V's, <laughs> Gary V's is like, well, mine's a little bit different. Um, <laughs> I tend to, I, I, it's all about perspective and I want to get to a place where I, I actually picture someone who is like one of my loved ones if they were dead. Right? <laughs> like, totally totally very different. Totally, different. <laughs> totally <laughs> opposite of a Tony Robbins. And that's how I get grateful every morning. Yeah, that's like, how I get gratitude <laughs> yeah. so that my mind's right yeah. going going the rest of the day. And it was the, their interaction about that was stellar because it was just like this. That's you could I don't know about coming up with yeah. different answers. Mm hmm to getting your mind right and getting your perspective right to start a day. But it was just, they both came to the agreement regarding, well, somehow you got to get this perspective that is the, the regarding gratitude, you know, this, mm -hmm. like, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. You're going to, uh, you're not a victim of your circumstances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you're not beholden to the circumstances that you're in. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And two guys that come from like, like, well, like you got Gary Vee, who's like an immigrant, you know, like first generation American. Yeah. Right. Come to America with nothing. They live in an apartment with like a bunch of family members or a small house. Oh, yeah. Then you got Tony Robbins, who had like four stepdads and just you know, poverty. a mother that like ver like physically abused him. Oh, and yeah. just like, like kicked him out of the everybody. street. Because Live. nobody fed him. Yeah. 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 But like, and, but also they have two totally different ways about how they correct their mentality. And they also are like incredible leaders in their businesses, like have lots of people that they're leading people that love them. Um, they're, it's they're, very influential. Yeah. The degree of influence that they have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Cause you, cause you get, you get to where you think like when you, when you listen to a lot of business stuff or whatever, you think everybody has to be Chris Traeger. It's like that. I'm a microchip and like I, getting yourself in like the perfect state or whatever. Jerry, hmm? I believe you are capable of much more. I'm not. Nonsense. Look in the mirror. Huh? You are an intelligent, charismatic, beautiful superhero. I'm making you head of public relations, which means you'll be leading the daily briefing sessions. Excellent idea. And Gary Vee's like, no, I'm just like glad that we're not dead and we're good. <laughs> You're like, yeah. okay, no, that's it's... about right. Yeah. Yeah, those would, we, I mean, we'd be failing to not mention those guys as far as yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, the biggest one for me, Eric, sorry. You go no, ahead. you're good. Go ahead. The biggest one for me and the one who actually really got me started was Robert Kiyosaki. I know I mentioned him last week, mm -hmm. but Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That book has so many different mentality views. Uh, he basically goes through comparing like his uh, quote unquote rich dad and his quote unquote poor dad and yeah. the different ways they would talk about money and employment and, you know, career paths and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, it's, it's so much about the mentality. It's so much about like, how do you wake up every day and think right to where are you thinking that a win is that you have the money today? Or are you thinking that a win is like, you have the asset that produces the money tomorrow. Cause a lot of times yeah. we think of cash and we think of like income as what's valuable, but that's not what actually builds wealth. Cause income, as soon as it's gone, you're toast. If you build assets, like businesses or like real estate, like real property or right. owning stock or like different things like that. If you're building assets, then you actually it can live for longer without working. And the goal of wealth is to live as long as possible, like to, to basically never have to work again, yet you always have what you need. Like that's what wealth, yeah. 
you know, is defined and as. And as like he defines wealth as like how long can you go without working, without mm-hmm. your standard of living changing. Mm-hmm. Right. And so the focus yeah, is actually but, on spending money and buying assets. Yep. Like how do you find creative ways to buy an asset? Which um, that's what a business is it, fundamentally. If you can actually build an effective one is you're, you're building an asset. It's almost like building a house. It's, it's something that you can do with lower money input and like that kind of thing. So, yeah. um, it's, it's a part of adding to your balance sheet, which is like what shows here, all the things that I possess that are producing income for me every month. So, um, yeah, no, that's really that a big deal. But then, and a lot of different, you know, things that kind of opened my eyes to real estate specifically and like, huh, maybe I need to think about getting into investing and that kind of thing. His book, uh, Rich Dad Guide to Investing, it's kind of a, a misnomer because most of the book is not what I thought it would be. I thought it'd be something more like about real estate investing or apartments or you know whatever, that kind of thing. It's about um, the structures of businesses. Like it's actually, it lays out the different pieces of like the accounting, legal, marketing, sales, uh, you know, like leadership team, like all the different aspects yeah. of I've a business. I've never read that one. Oh, yeah, and, that. and that, in my mind, is what really like set the table for, okay, here are all the different components that I'm going to have to be looking for in a business. It's really good. And then it lets you drill down into like Gary V's the marketing guy. Cardone is the sales guy. Robbins is the, the team and leadership guy. And like you can put these different pieces in their right, rightful place. The roles are- no, that's fantastic. I was even thinking about it as you were describing that. And I was like, okay, so Tony, Tony for us has like this influence. Uh, that you had mentioned. Um, how did you phrase it as like far as team what leadership? leadership? Like team. It's basically like management yeah, of people. Yeah. yeah. And then Gary Vee is like this marketing guy, like, and they all, and so, you know, Cardone regarding like sales and. And Wheelwright about taxes. Tom Wheelwright, yeah. Rich Dad Advisor. He's my favorite. It's totally. amazing. I could nerd out about that a lot. Totally. And then, uh, and then I think of like the, um, I, especially communication, high level of communication within a business and whether you have two or three people that you're working with, or if you grow into something that's like dozens of people, right. you start talking about hundreds of people and the importance of actually communicating at a very high level. And there was, there were things that I think that we had some level of familiarity with regarding the importance of asking clarifying questions and yep. it, just in any, there's so many different ways in which we can have personal conflict or potential conflict with other people in our lives. Mm -hmm. that if we don't ask clarifying questions, things go sideways so fast. And we jump to all sorts of conclusions that that just, they make it much more of a disaster than what could be avoided. Oh yeah. No, the Mm -hmm. ways that we can misunderstand each other. Like we had so much personal history there with like the ways that we can misunderstand each other, the assumptions that we can make that can be just totally fatal and like to communication. And like, we think that we know what's going on and we have no idea what's going on. And then all the things that we've got going on in the back of our head that if left unexpressed can psych us out, can screw stuff up, can, you know, lead to irrational action towards one another or whatever, like that kind of stuff. Yep. And just the importance of actually expressing those things and working through those things. Yeah. So. And, and there was like this, I thought of, so a, a certain degree of transparency mm-hmm, was mm-hmm, important enough mm-hmm. with us and we'll get into some of that later, but it's mm-hmm. like this, just even among the three of us, there was mm-hmm. this high level of transparency right, that we found necessary. Right. And then come to find out there's like Ray Dalio yeah, and who he say, is as an individual, yeah. you know, the book principles, the principles is the name of that book. Yeah, principles. Um, principles. He goes into this, he's describing what he refers to as this idea of meritocracy mm-hmm. and how important it is to have transparency and like this, this open, honest communication with one another, whether it's just yeah. think of it this way. It was like, let's say you even have a business that's, it's just you. Like you're the one who's starting it, yeah. right? None of us, honestly, none of us are so good at enough things that we can work independently <laughs> from advice and counsel that others can give us. Yep. Even if it's like a contractor or like some vendor outside of your company, like you need their advice. Like totally. It, yeah. Just people who have just a lot more experience yep. and just they're m- more knowledgeable about particular things in the world. So but he goes in to describe this radical transparency that within a business, the way that it's structured is they promote so much this abandonment of the fear of like embarrassment and rejection regarding one's ideas. Mm-hmm. So if yeah. I've got an idea, 
I, I don't, I don't look at that and, and think this is my, here's my little pet idea. I'm, I'm going to, I really think that this is the thing that we ought to do, but I'm so afraid of the criticism and the critique that might come my way that I'm shy to even propose it. Yeah. Or when I do that, maybe I get, I get really offended because somebody has actually critiqued it and asked, you know, questions the legitimacy of oh, it. Yeah. But there's all those fears that can come into, is it worth it for me to actually propose what I'm thinking for this idea yeah. regarding the business? And this radical transparency that just openly accepts criticism and critique so that we can actually be corrected. What it does, yeah. it, it solves problems faster. It solves problems faster. It maximizes efficiency a whole lot faster. Like it saves people from so many mistakes that listen, all those are, it's not like all these mistakes along the way in business are preventable. Oh yeah. However, there are some that are like of high degree, very, that can be prevented in as much as you actually accept, you go and seek out wisdom and understanding and counsel regarding, is this even a good way to do this? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, is this how I should run my business? Right. Oh yeah. No, it's, it's a combination. It's, it's a combination of like Tony Robbins talks about modeling a lot and like looking for like examples to follow and that kind of thing. But the other piece is like this, everybody talks about failing fast and how important it is to like fail fast. But if you're caught up in your ego and what you, you wanting to be viewed as impressive or wanting to think of yourself as impressive in in whatever different way or fearing thinking of yourself as not impressive, you know, like the different ways that can play out. What will other people think of me? Oh yeah. (laughs) Then then it keeps you from being honest about, I screwed up and I need to change that thing. And it's like, Hey, I tried that. Fine. I'm moving on. Um, People oftentimes are like, Hey, I tried that. And I got to prove that that thing actually works because it was my idea. And it, it again gets back to this whole, like ideas aren't actually the thing. It's, it's filtering the ideas and working on the good ideas. That's actually the thing. It's, and, like, and sur- to, it's like survival of the fittest almost like with the idea. <laughs> well, well, not to Charles Darwin here. Oh goodness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's from a, a lot of the past there. Um, Off with his head. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. There's no, a no. monkey in there. Um, <laughs> there is a monkey in there. Yeah. So, uh, but the execution being key, it's yeah. just like, that's actually the key to the thing. And I think people, um, I'm certain that there are plenty of people out there wondering, um, do I need, should I start a business? Like yep. what's the risk involved and in all this? And they can, it's like, they think that they have to have so much of it figured out to a particular degree that is, you know, that's, yeah, it, that just, it just doesn't it's happen impossible. like that. Like it's it just, impossible. It is like, just this impossible thing. You can read, you can model, you can get different, you know, mentors and examples and, you know, read biographies, all this stuff. But at the end of the day, I, one of my favorite quotes about business is from Elon Musk. He says that uh, starting a business is like chewing on glass and staring into the abyss. <laughs> and what he means by that is like, Chewing on glass being one of the most painful things you you could ever imagine mm-hmm, doing, mm-hmm, yeah. and looking into the abyss like one of these like completely hopeless. There is no light. There is no hope. Like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Right. Where's the relief? Oh yeah. Where's- oh yeah. <laughs> and that's from a guy who's uh, been very successful at starting some crazy businesses. You know, like yeah. Tesla and PayPal and you know SpaceX, all that. And the so the boring company. The boring company. Um. <laughs> so, but and I think that's the thing that if people get into it with the wrong expectation of what it, it's going to be and they, they don't know what the pain is that comes on the backside. Cause it's going to happen. It will happen. It's inevitable. You it cannot, you cannot build a successful business yeah. without bleeding. It's yeah. not a sign of failure. Right. That's right. not the sign of failure. It's like, that's, um, I mean the people who do fail is they, yep. they is when that something like the, there's a setback or this idea didn't work out and then it's like, well, that's that. Yep. No, it's like, uh, it's, it's your favorite money ball clip. We could probably show this right here. What it's your favorite is? money clip. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, where Brad Pitt, you know, uh, is being like, looks at the guy and he's like, adapt or die. Billy, you got a kid in there that's got a degree in economics from Yale. You got a scout here with 29 years of baseball experience. Yeah, You're yeah. listening to the wrong one. Now there are intangibles that only baseball people understand. You're discounting what scouts have done for 150 years, even yourself? Adapt or die. 
That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, it's very interesting like, hearing you talk about it because it's like, um, you know, with investments, you know, the best investment deals, they say you're going to do 10 deals, right? And like three of them are going to make money. Three mm-hmm. of them are going to like be massive mm-hmm. losses and three of them are going to break even. Well, like in business, our ideas and what we do, it's like most of them aren't going to be that great. Oh, but yeah. then find the good ones and stick with it. Yeah. And then kill the bad ones quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, the, the funny thing is I just, I, I love coming up with a new thing. And so that's been a, a big obstacle for me. Um, yeah, no, just been thinking about like what, what the journey has been for us to get here into this place. And just, yeah. uh, it's. Well, and with that, like how many times have we had the conversation of like, do the boring thing, do the boring thing, <laughs> do the boring thing. But the boring thing actually gets like, actually takes care of people, actually helps people, yeah. actually moves the ball down, like actually accomplishes a lot. Right. And it's not like, Go reinvent something. It's just do that boring thing. Right. Have that conversation. Right. Well, when you talk about that, practicing a sales script, oh yeah, like mind numbing. Like some, it does. I don't know what seems more like you're just a psycho than if you're <laughs> sitting in a room and you're just, you know, you're going through the script by yourself and you're just over there practicing those words. Like, H- it's honey, just, who are you talking to in there? <laughs> <laughs> it's just that's a good Danielle. <laughs> It's, it's, you know, if you were to just look at that, you'd be like, this is, why would I want to do that? Mm-hmm. Well, because the things like that kind of process that seem boring and just like mm-hmm. the most mundane thing, you have to do it. You have yep. to be able to do it to be successful. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Because don't get me wrong. There are certain hacks that make your life easier, but <laughs> there's no final hack that keeps you from working. Totally. I can, yeah. as from yep. everything I can see. Um, I mean, it, it's interesting because, like, um, the other person who comes to mind in terms of like who's been really influential on us and uh, how the business kind of got built out is a guy named Joshua Smith. He's a a realtor out of um, Phoenix area, mm-hmm. in Arizona. And when nobody was <laughs> that we were around was really experiencing like this terrific amount of success in an open house, for example, we uh, started doing the the strategies and putting them in place that he uses for open houses. Yeah. We, I remember that the first one is a house over on Janeway and, uh, that's in more, right? Yeah. In more is like $125,000 house or $135,000 house. Yep. And, uh, we had over a hundred people walk through the door. And I remember like everybody at our brokerage at the time just freaked out. Oh, like, there's yeah. no way that's true. Oh yeah. <laughs> and like nobody oh, yeah. knew like what? And then we repeat it like within the month yeah. on can't drive. Yeah. And it's like, you finally start to get a little bit of traction with some, something like that where you're like, okay, how do we, how do we max out an open house? How do we actually like make an open house as big as it possibly can be? And suddenly it's like, because it's this basic thing. Super. I mean, everybody talks about, yeah, do an open house. You'll get some business. No, like we blew it up and got business because we were modeling what this guy was doing. Similar kind of thing. We started uh, doing this Facebook posting stuff where we, you know, post houses on Facebook and most people who know us in real estate met us on Facebook. Like it's just a huge yeah. number of people who are right. connected to that. And, um, <clears throat> basically like followed his, his model for that. And suddenly just start yeah. getting like tons of hits on our website, tons of Facebook messages, getting in, tons of interaction, you know, interactions, with people. Yeah. like yeah. learning that like, okay, texting is actually a big way to do it instead of like, uh, you know, even you uh, brought that up, just cold calls or like something or like whatever. Tom Ferry had mentioned that it's the kind totally. of thing where it's in terms of you know where do you look? It's just like well, I think you kind of have to go into all these different directions, mm-hmm. right? Like like just leave leave uh, no stone unturned. You've got to like, try <laughs> so many different things. Yeah, but the it's, many of it's them will not them, work. But many yeah. of them will not work, and it's it's having the it's building the discern, discernment to know when it's not working being honest about when it's not working, yes. being willing to kill your favorite idea, yep. Maven Mondays. Uh, yeah, sure. Favorite idea ever. Totally. Um, Resurrected it, from the dead. <laughs> <you know, laughs> kind of. Uh, in a very different way. Yeah. But, um, yeah. you know, being willing to let those ideas go so that the good ideas can actually have the resources that they need to succeed. And so yep. you have to, there's a certain humility that you have to walk into it with mm-hmm. where, you don't care how you build the thing. You just care that it gets built. Right. And, and right. 
and, and having an, I guess, openness and like a willingness to like explore and figure out, okay, I did that thing that way, but it was very unsuccessful. What if we tried it this way? Yes. And, and also this like hope that there is a good solution to this problem out yeah. there somewhere. Well, yeah. and how much is, and how many times is the, is the answer sometimes just not now? Like it's like, yeah. so it's not yeah, now. It's like, you, it. yep. you've got to do this other thing and get these other systems in place. And then, yep. and then can, it all clicks and makes sense. And that's yep. what happened with the podcast stuff is like, no, sure, it's right. early on. We weren't doing oh, yeah. the, we weren't doing, we were trying to, we had decided not to do phone calls. Yeah. We, we actually were doing, we were doing, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but from what I understand, there was even like, the show still kind of occurring. It was still going after we shut down making any kind of phone calls after to leads. Down, oh, yeah. Phone calls yeah. to leads. And we like registered interested in houses, you know, maybe hadn't requested showing or whatever, but you know, yeah. like there's going to be, a, there's yeah. got to be a different way because there's a lot of rejection on the other end of this line. Yeah. Well, and then you find out after you actually do it that yes, there is some rejection involved. However, mm-hmm. yeah. you can get a lot better at dealing oh, with yeah. people on the phone. Yeah. Well, and some of that <laughs> is list, like listening to other people, the practice of asking those clarifying questions along the way, like, yeah, well, even asking like you, like coming up with questions that expose and help people even realize what's going on with them and what kind of, what things they don't know that are preventing them from getting the help they need. Sure. Like that was a huge thing. Whenever you figured out like, why are people not talking to me whenever I make this phone call? Yeah. And getting through that. It's like, over half of them thought that you had to pay a real estate agent as a buyer <laughs> in the state of Oklahoma. Yep. And it's, you do not, you do not pay a real estate agent. Oh, yeah. uh, if you're buying a house, you don't actually pay them to assist you throughout the transaction. And lo and behold, when people don't, when they know what's actually the truth and like how, their options that are available to them, available to them, like totally, they can man. get the help that they actually need. Oh, yeah. yep. And buyers um, suddenly start like just opening up to you. We'll tell you everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 No, that's no, right. Well, that's, and it's interesting because, like, um, there is so much of, like, the right thing at the wrong time that has, has gone on. Even when thinking about something like a, a Maven Mondays or podcast yeah. type thing, it's like um, I had viewed it as, okay, we got to build up this marketing thing, and that's what is going to lead to, you know, building a business. Mm-hmm. I hadn't sold a house when I was in the first one. I had done plenty of research. <laughs> I had right. been in the middle of a bunch of transactions. Yeah. But we, like, I think I put out the first one before I had even closed on a deal. And it's like, uh, who's really going to listen? I mean, do you really know what you're talking about? (laughs) And is that 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 the best way to get a deal versus like, you know, get stability in your business? It makes me, it really, I immediately have this thought of Gary V and the way that he talks about marketing. Yep. And when he draws from his experience regarding the wine business that he had helped build for his dad. And it was this he's he's telling people he's he's saying well the only reason i can even talk about it, all these different experiences this way is because i've invested years yeah right of time and effort and energy mm-hmm. into this so that i can speak in a way that is it's yeah. it's actually it makes sense it's right <laughs> yeah it's clear mm-hmm. it's but he's drawing from an experience of actually executing yeah on it yeah it isn't you know, just yeah. well, like doesn't he say like it? Like he spent seven years like working in his dad's store, like stocking shelves yeah. and like yeah. selling selling product. Seven years before he ever before he ever did, did an episode of Wine Library, yeah. which the Wine Library didn't take off immediately. Yep. You know, so I mean, seven years of like we. I think of Gary Vee, and I think of like well, the way we see the him today. person, the YouTube. Yeah. sensation the instagram Personality, sensation the dude who's gonna buy the jet yeah. someday <laughs> and that guy didn't step yeah. in front of a camera and was working his butt off for seven years yep seven years yeah yep and then still didn't instantly get return right, right. So, yeah, yeah there was still the investment when he started that the investment in time that he had to put into the yeah. wine library tv or whatever that was at the time so yep but the the actual putting in the work and doing the work yeah so that when you go, to, you're doing that marketing in this way that is the show. I'll let you kind of yeah, well, take it from there as far as the way you want to go with it. I didn't yeah, no, no. Well, it, it's more like uh, to close the thought, like more like there are certain hacks that do work. There are certain things that whenever you execute on those things, you'll get farther. But until you just start executing on something, you can't even test it. And, yeah. and the, 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 the building the business is about right. that testing, about that experimentation and figuring out, okay, well, I put this effort, these resources, this money, this time into this thing. Why did I get back out of it? And 
maybe it's not that I have to write it off permanently, but it's not working right now. So I need to make this adjustment, make some progress over here, then maybe try it again. And that you're like that kind of thing. And it's building out your, your skill set in all the different dimensions, but you have to start with an effort. There's no like sitting back and reading all the books that actually gets you prepared for that. Yeah. It is right. like so much connected to effort. There's nothing that's really going to like save you from the bleeding and the, and the time investment. If you really want to, to, to get what is, is the, the benefits and the results and the outcomes that come from starting a business, you have to put in the work of starting a business. Yeah. There's no middle. Yeah. Like there is a real danger with the whole reading thing of like, you can read too much and all day. <laughs> and then it's like, you have to like read the thing, make a decision. What I learned from this, implement it and then take that. But it's like implement, 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 like no, that's it. implement it a ton and then go back and read again and then implement it. And like, it, but it's constantly like take in, absorb the thing and then implement it. Yep. Try mm -hmm. it. Well, what's even, let me, let me try to pose this question real quick, because I think this is, we've got two things at least are going on here. We have the necessary, sometimes it's, it's so much effort and there's so much time that a person has to invest really testing what they've, I've learned this concept. Now I'm going to try to implement it in my business. Mm -hmm. It takes time and effort. And there's this, um, it's, you know, it's the force, the force it's working against you, mm -hmm. you know, the, that's, it's not, it doesn't seem like it's successful. How do I determine if this is, is, if this, is it just a matter of me doing this more and working harder at it and pushing, or how do I now come to a realization that's this, this isn't the thing, or it's not the thing right now. Yep. And I, and <laughs> And the discernment of, of answering that question is one of the hardest skills to build is like knowing. I think because yeah. I, I think it crushes a, a lot of people. Yeah. When we, t when people talk about the, the failure rate of businesses, yeah. I think that in particular, when someone actually gets going and they get started and they come to cr the crossroad that is, I'm going to push in this particular endeavor for a business. And cause this is the idea and I'm going to push through it versus this is actually not what I need to be doing or it's not what I need to be doing right now. I need to do this instead yeah. and weighing that matter. Yeah. I think that that there, there are certain things that we need to probably kind of talk about a little bit here oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. for advising people along the way. I definitely think of being able to take criticism and inviting criticism. Like you can't sit back and wait for uh, the world out there to come to you and correct your problems. Mm -hmm. Like you've got to go seek it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like, Find out who's trustworthy and who is knowledgeable. Get Even that can opinion. be challenging. Even that can be no, challenging. Because totally. it's not just like your friend who has a mildly successful business or something. Yeah, like you, like you really have careful. to actually find someone who objectively is successful in the, in the either arena or building the, the, the size of business or the flexibility of the business or whatever that you're trying to build. Yep. Um, it can be really easy to just ask the close person rather than asking the right person. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's not about just because someone else is self-employed because, and this is one of the things I love about Kiyosaki, right? He talks about the cash flow quadrant. He talks about like four different types of people. You've got your employee who a lot of people think of as like, okay, this is what I do. And like, I just show up for a job and that's how you make money. Right. Right. Then he talks about the self-employed person who it's like their spirit is, um, if it's worth, yeah, the only way to do it is to do it yourself. Basically like you've got to do it right. And so you got to do yeah. it yourself. Yeah. And it's like, that's not a business owner. Yeah. It's a, they have what would be like an LLC, right? They have an sure. entity, a corporation, whatever, yeah. but that's not a business owner. They're just an employee of themselves. basically. Right. Right. The business owner is the person who's like, how do I build my team? And how do I put other people in positions where I enable them, empower them to actually execute Yep. and, and just provide the structure and build the system for everybody else to thrive in. Yeah. And then you have the investor who is like basically doing that with assets and you know, that, that, that type of stuff, like he's spending money to, to grow the money. And yeah. so usually like the, the, the E and S quadrant side have really similar mentalities and obstacles as the, the B and the B and I side have this totally different it's the employee, set. the self-employed, the employee self-employed versus business owner investor. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so it's like, when you say not just self-employed, it's like, there's a big difference between wanting to be self-employed to where you're your own boss because you can't get along with an employer. Like I'm not, I'm not in business because I couldn't get along with an employer. Right. Yeah. I'm not in business because <laughs> like, I, I just really wanted to, to be my own guy. I'm in yeah. business because it was the only way to get to where I feel obligated to go and build yeah. what I think I'm like put here on this planet to build. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, Oh, that's, that's different. <laughs> So oh, sorry to totally. cut you off, but that's like a huge, like within I that actually, self-employed thing, it's a huge deal. Well, I think that's a pretty good transition into what we need to cover next is just regarding, Yeah, you talked about. Uh, the journey. Yeah, the yeah. journey for yourself and how we even get to the starting point for the real estate business for yeah. each of us. Yeah. Um, I well, didn't, I'm really interested to hear what you guys say because like my my narrative is like super clear in my mind. I've told this story over and over and it's like, you know, because I was the one who started, I'm, I'm the risk taker, bold guy who was like, right. okay, I'm the first one to quit my job. And like, let's do this guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, really basically in, in 2012, as I was in my senior year studying biochemistry, or whatever, um, a friend recommended, uh, Kiyosaki's book, rich dad, poor dad to me. And I read it that spring started thinking for the first time about business and real estate and like, Oh, this could be interesting. I had just gotten past my uh, plans of, of going and being in the academy and, and, you know, doing like intellectual pursuits with uh, biotech kind of stuff. Although right. I am a published author, mind you. So, Nerd. Yep. You can look me up in the uh, yeah, Journal of Biophysical Chemistry. Um, but so I really basically like I, I read crystals. that. And, and what's funny is I, I interviewed, I, when I was interviewing for jobs that summer, right before we got married, uh, Casey and I got married, we... I remember being at Chesapeake and interviewing for a chemical engineering position. Mm -hmm. And I think I mentioned that like part of my long-term plans were to like get it, like basically do real estate and like have some kind of business doing real estate. Yeah. Like investing type stuff. Totally think that I didn't get that job because they were like, Oh, this guy's already looking past this job. Uh. <laughs> I was like, that was a mistake. <laughs> so I didn't really know a whole wow. lot about how to sell myself uh. at that point. Uh, <laughs> to the audience. Um, You're over there. I'm just trying to tell you about just yeah. the ambition that I have. And oh just my my goals. Yeah. No, but so I, I was working in biotech <clears throat> and all that kind of stuff. And I, um, in 2014, I, uh, decided that I ha basically didn't really have a choice except to jump into business. Um, I, I became aware, and this is like hyper personal, but very connected to like the big, you know, long-term plan. Um, I became aware of just how, uh, I thought a lot about adoption, like, you know, yeah. for years about yeah. like really wanting to like take care of kids. Like you didn't have a home and, and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I became aware of like how many, um, how many embryos are actually left over, um, and, and orphaned through a lot of the, the IVF, like in vitro fertilization, fertility type process. And so, uh, as soon as I like heard about that, like my heart went out for these, these kids because, you know, totally believe that they're humans made in the image of God who have every human right that you and I have, uh, from the point of fertilization onward. And so just really, uh, struck by like, we're talking about millions of children who are orphans stuck in a freezer that nobody knows about and nobody is coming for and nobody cares about. And how in the world do I do anything to help them? And so, um, basically I started reverse engineering. Like how would you get to a point where you were getting as many embryos as possible out of a freezer? So like the next step was like, okay, you'd have to build a business, like some kind of an, an embryo rescue clinic kind of thing. And like this foundation kind of you know, like, to yeah. like how do you build the infrastructure of medical personnel and people to actually get, <laughs> yeah, like all that. And, and just like, whoa, yeah, okay, right. that's a lot there because it's probably like a chain of these clinics. You're like, oh my gosh, that's huge. But you, then you don't have big ambitions here. Yeah, this, I know. This, no, this, no, this, this is thing. real, like where I am trying to go with my life. Yeah. And because then, then you take one more step back on the chain and it's like, so you have to know a lot of business, but you also have to have a lot of assets. 
because who's really going to fund this starting out? Um, I don't know of anybody. So, right. Hey, maybe I just need to build the assets up myself. Well, yeah. what's the best way to build up assets? I already read the Kiyosaki very much believed in real estate as a vehicle, you know, long-term apartment investing, like that type of stuff, Yeah, you know, residential and apartment. Um, and, and so like had this kind of vision of like, okay, I've got to get to there, but I can't learn business experimenting on this whole embryo clinic thing. Cause I have to actually execute that thing. I can't like go try it and fail on the idea and screw it all up and like never get funding again kind mm. of thing. So I knew I needed to start a business. The thing that made the most sense connected with the investing is a real estate business. So literally like that's gotcha. actually the chain, like the investing and the, the, the business know-how is the chain that like brought me to like, okay, let's start selling houses. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you were a little more planned. Than <laughs> yeah. That's- well, and it's interesting cause like Kiyosaki mentions um, how like one of the most important pieces to learn starting out in business is sales. It was the first time I'd ever even considered sales. Apparently he actually, uh, before he even started investing in a, a multifamily and kind of stuff, he was, uh, went and worked for Xerox as a, as a salesperson, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I had always, not really had any interest in sales, even though I pretended, you know, as a kid to be a car salesman or whatever. But I, I, cause I always like had this bad taste in my mouth of the vague notion that everybody has of like a used car salesman kind of it's whatever. Like, and that everybody's person, got a telemarketing yeah, call. You're like, you're not listening to me. You don't care about don't me. Care you're, about you're, others. you're a total you're jerk. Just disingenuous yeah. You're just trying to get stuff. your way. Yeah, right. And I didn't realize that there was another side to it. Yeah. Um, the way I've, I've now heard it compared is like, you've got, uh, it's like different cowboys in a movie, right? You got the white hat cowboy, the good guy and the black hat cowboy is the bad guy. Mm-hmm. It's like, you've got the white hat salesman. Who's like the person who actually cares about you and is trying to solve your problem, trying to serve you, trying to listen. Yeah. You've got the black hat cowboy. Who's just like, I'm out to get mine and I'm going right. to use you yeah. to get mine. Um, and so like when I, when it finally clicked and I realized that sales really can be about listening to people and like, serving them and helping mm-hmm. them find what they want. Yep. It like blew my mind in terms of, Oh my gosh, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. Like this high, <laughs> like a high trust sales context is so much about like communication. And, and like we've talked about in the past with enough history there with like seeking, how do we be the best communicators we can be? And it's like, Oh, this, this makes, this makes too much sense. Yeah. Um, and there's a guy, there's a guy who I've uh, heard more recently uh, named Chris Voss, who is like a hostage negotiator, <laughs> um, and, <laughs> which Very is fascinating. Good. Apparently that's what like my wife always wanted to be was, or study was hostage negotiation. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> um, funny. And what he talks about is at the end of the day, all that matters with everyone is trust and everyone deserves to be listened to is how he says it. So like his, the way he negotiates with these hostages is he like lets them tell their story and shows like an understanding of like how that makes sense to them. Yeah. 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 And that's how he actually gets where he needs to go with those people and helps them be like, okay, let's maybe do a little bit less destructive pattern in our life to like, you know, not, (laughs) like you know, try to tear families apart and, you know, just to make a little money. Right. Um, Right. Which, you know, it's probably not that extreme when we talk to people who are looking for a house, maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. Some don't negotiation know. with agents feels like that. But, <laughs> but. Sometimes yeah. it feels like marriages are on the line, you know. That sometimes, kind of yeah. Yeah. sometimes it can. It's no some, joke. <laughs> sometimes it's going to be the case. Oftentimes it's people don't even, they're not necessarily clear. It's yeah. not even that they've got, maybe the strongest opinion that they have is that they don't know and they're confused. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that might be like the one thing that they are certain of. And helping them by listening to them and asking clarifying questions. Helps helping. them express themselves so that they even know what they want. Yep. Because yep. a lot of times totally. they don't even know what they want. That's a big, and, in his book, Chris Voss, his um, book, Never Split the Difference, which you would love, Aaron. Mm-hmm. I know you would actually love his book. <laughs> um, like one of the things he talks about is like you need to be able to express back better to the per. Like you want them to feel like you understand them better than they understand themselves. Absolutely. Like that's, that's really how good. well you should listen to them. Absolutely. And be able to give that back to them. So. Absolutely. No, and it's so funny because like when we started Maven, it was knowledge and communication were the two pillars. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what we meant by communication. Even then, like we couldn't have expressed it that well, but it's like being no, able to, to, to understand people better than they understand themselves and help them understand themselves better. It's like, that's 
what lights us all up. And it's like, no, oh, <laughs> it's totally, totally into. Yeah. And, and totally. like, that makes sense. I, from the beginning, we've been able to walk this line. Cause I even remember one of the first deals you closed. We literally like lost money on. Yep. Because we were trying to like do right by the, and mm-hmm. long story with that, but I would mm-hmm. rather give someone the shirt off my back and walk away with nothing or even losing something if I earn their trust. Because if I earn their trust, like they'll send me all their friends, all their family, no, everything for the rest of my life, like mm-hmm. all kinds of, and I'll be able to sleep at night. And it's like, I know I'm oh, like yeah. doing good in the world instead of like screwing people over to get mine. No, like, I hate that. Well, like, and it's like, that is one of those things. It's just people, there are certain, you get involved in a particular business and you start getting self-interested. Yeah. It's more about, it's more about yourself and less about others around or you. Or panicked. Like oh, you, you can sure, even be desperate. Yeah. 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 And then becomes this, you get very short sighted and all of a sudden it's about you making a particular amount of money yep. than it is about putting others before your needs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. And, and, and that does, that does actually, I think in some, in many ways that does actually catch up with a person. Yeah. One well, way totally, or another, it totally. actually yeah. does. Yeah. Whether I mean, it's reputation or, I mean, you, you just talk about people don't want to work with you. Right. Like people don't want to work with you. Right. And, and, um, that's so you, costly. You can I mean, only skin a sheep once. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if you just try to screw people over, yep. they're gone. I yep. mean, and, and you'll, you'll start to have the stink about you Yeah. and start to get lawsuits piling up and all kinds like it, it has so much impact. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's right. So, well, and I definitely know, like for me, like even that inst that first instance, like mm-hmm. that was, I knew, well, I, I say I know, like it definitely made me feel confident moving forward. Like this was going to be a good partnership that we took care of those people. Right. And then like, there's been like times like that. We haven't necessarily had that same instance, but like there've been mm-hmm. times when we had to take care of people and it really cost us. Um, but we did the right thing by those people. You, you and, have to. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, and that's not to say like, just because somebody's saying that they deserve something means that that's true. Cause you got all mm-hmm. kinds of people who want to like, just, just, you know, that they're out taking advantage of people everywhere that they can. But it is to say like, you have to like, sacrifice to actually care for people. I mean, there's going to be these moments along the way. And somebody wants to have a success. Even when it wasn't your fault, even when it wasn't your fault, like to be very clear, like there's going to be moments along the way you want to have a successful business and you're going to, you're going to have these choices of whether or not, whether or not you can, maybe you even, you even do the thing. Let's say you even do the thing. That's like uh, uh, making something right with a person, but, but you're basically bitter about it. Oh yeah. I, and there's this, and that's a crippling thing to a person's mentality. That's just, oh, I would have gotten ahead yep. if I didn't have to go through that particular circumstance. Oh yeah. And it's like, no, what you do is you treat people right, you do the right thing, and you don't blame your circumstance. You're not a victim of the circumstance. Like you can overcome that. Mm-hmm. You got to have humility, and you got to work hard, but you can actually overcome that circumstance. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I was, I was curious also, so that was, I didn't know if you want to touch any more, Josh, just leading up to getting involved in real estate in particular, but I know I was going to ask Jeremy just for his. Oh yeah. No, I mean, it was literally that, like, um, I, I really kind of got stuff in motion right after I bought my first home at the end of 2014, got my license in January oh, yeah. and 15, yeah. started calling friends and family, mm-hmm. uh, quit my day job in April thinking that I had enough business going to pay my bills. Yes. I did not have a contract. <laughs> I did not even have anything under contract, but I, I thought, yeah. oh, there's someone talking about a listing and I've got this actual listing. Yeah. Yeah. Something's going to work out because yeah. I did have a listing, but, uh, so I quit in April. I didn't actually close a deal and make any money until July of that year. Yep. <laughs> it's like, oh, man. that's a long time to wait when you don't have any money. Oh, like, yeah. cause we didn't. That's so. funny. So your first closing and my first closing were really close together. Yeah. 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 And then I dog. lost this money. <laughs> <laughs> well, not You're net. Welcome. You did. Uh, well, was, yeah, we yeah, did yeah. net positive, yeah. but right. it wasn't right. what we should have. Right. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So Jeremy, let's hear about your, uh, how'd you get into this? So uh, <laughs> how did I drag you into this? <laughs> well, it was a uh, yeah, funny story. Like it just like up until the point of real estate for me. So I was going to college I dabbled a lot in college. I had no idea really what I was going to do with college. 
Yeah. You were going to be in biochemistry with me for a while, well, weren't there you? Was, yeah. yeah, so I thought I was going to be a doctor yeah. and I could do this apologetic stuff with doing the me- the medicine, the pre-med, like the all the science stuff there. Got there, hated the science aspect of like I hated the lab stuff, which apparently oh. I should have done a different lab. and Missed it, yeah. yeah I should have talked to you, you know, anyway. a meritocracy. Water under the bridge, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then I wound up studying history of science and I studied a bunch of Greek – Mythology yeah. and letters, and I'm just kind of like a Renaissance man of sorts. And, yes, you are. Um, <laughs> and the true Renaissance man. Yeah. <laughs> so then I wind up. Then I believe Aaron, you got it. I call it like you graduated mm-hmm. about like a year before I was go- set to graduate, yeah. and then I watched you like go and try to find a job with your history degree, which I was working on a history degree. And didn't get a whole lot of luck there. It was effective, you, wasn't it? <laughs> I applied you, to a lot of best buys. <laughs> that's, that's one of the things I remember that was yeah. relatively which, painful. Which blew my mind because everybody in in high school, what did everybody say? Just oh, go to school, get a get, get a degree, degree, get a degree, get a degree, get a degree. You'll be fine. That's a point of view. Which yeah. there is, you know, go get a science degree. You'll have some sort of job or whatever. But like, it's, then I was like, well, it's crap. Got its place. It's got its place, but it's much more limited than yeah, people assume yeah. that it is. Just make sure you like collecting data. I hate, I just wanted to talk to people all day, even though I got a science job. <laughs> I hated collecting data. <laughs> it didn't work. So, so I went up, and for me, it's, it's actually been a really, like, I my identity, like, I was always in, act, like, I was good in high school and stuff, yeah. and so my identity, like, a lot of that, it was hard to be, admit, like, I'm a college dropout, you know? So, oh, yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. I dropped out of college, and... Failure. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so I went and I got a job at Arvest, just yeah. counting other people's money, um, yep. being a teller. You started to see how much money there was in the world. I'm just kidding. Oh, well, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it did. Like that was really interesting because it did. Like I got to talk to. I talked to so many people at Arvest, oh, a lot yeah, of different people, so and many some different people, some realtors. Um, yeah. Which and they all told me it was really hard. And I think I don't know the ones that I met like. Uh, looking back on it, like, eh. I mean, well, it is hard, but it, they were just wrong, like in the, the takes and stuff. But um, <laughs> more of just like the victim mentality yeah. stuff and that sort of thing. And then yeah. while I was at, at Arvest, I was constantly trying to work on trying to find some sort of career or side hustle thing like that. So I think I like dabbled in like wedding photography and different kinds of photography oh, yeah. for a time. Didn't there. you start like buying stuff from China and selling it or what? Like, I did. Yeah. I did. I did some like, yeah, I had an, a website where we sold. Fan type stuff, and Danielle did that. Like Zelda, too. All that Zelda, thing. and Harry Potter, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Was that. A yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was even like while we were in real estate. That's, That's what, what I was just thinking. Yeah. That was yeah. like I remember yeah. when I started. That was still happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and it was, and it was supposed to be like there was like a team. Like yeah, we didn't realize how much work it takes to like for one to have, for Danielle to raise children, <laughs> and for two for me to sell real estate. <laughs> You know, because yeah. it's like one of those things like she would do that and I do that. It's like actually it is a full time job raising children. Like that's real. So much, work. Um, so much more than a full time job. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, she works way harder than <laughs> right. I do. She just does. Um, but then like there was like you came to me and started pitching this idea of selling real estate. And I know even at the time I was just thinking like I I thought the word was uh, relator. Relator. I, I, even when I was taking real, going to real estate school, I still called it Relator for the longest time. Yes. Uh, that's, that's how we say it in Lone Grove is Relator. Relator. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I didn't and then, it was and then you met like the, the pretentious people who are like, yeah. it's Realtor. With a trademark. Realtor. With a trademark. Copyright. With a trademark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With a trademark. Yeah. So yeah, you can't use that symbol unless you pay <laughs> your dues, <laughs> which I do. But uh, um, so other than not pronouncing it correctly, yeah. there was, but it was, so, but yeah. it was definitely, there was some more pie in the sky at the time. Um, yeah. You know, like in expectations of, I was really good at casting the vision, wasn't I? You were, you like, were, man, this is awesome. This is great. It's going to go great. It's casting the vision. <laughs> The Dave Koresh of Real Tour. No, 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 I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's charismatic. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Jeez. Some, somewhat a self destructive reference. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, so, um, but there was like this, I didn't have any upward mobility at our vest. I mean, it, some of it, I thought I was going to be going to do it something anyways. And so I wasn't yeah. trying to advance there. And then it's like, oh, this is something like there really isn't, there's not a way to. You get there and you sell as much as you sell and whatever you sell, you make, you know? Yep. Um, yep. 
And that was really, really appealing because that's not something you can find anywhere. Totally. Um, well, and I just want to piggyback on that briefly because I think there's some people who think that that getting into entrepreneurship will fix that whole thing for them. And obviously you did. That yeah. being I actually, looking back on it, I actually think that my belief related to that was completely wrong. Like I, I thought the same thing as far as like, as far as entrepreneurship. Well, the, the people talk about like entrepreneurship and then intrapreneurship. Like okay. what, if you ask the question, like what if you put the same amount of like hours, effort, attention, commitment yeah. into like working your way up within an existing company or at least within an existing industry. Mm -hmm. If I had put the hours in, if I had been putting in the 80, 90 hour weeks in biotech, and I had yep. been like just all in totally focused, dead set. Like, yep. let's figure this out even without an extra degree. Right. Cause I was thinking the degree was my obstacle there. If, if I had actually put all chips in, I don't have any other option. Like, let's do this. Like, let's, let's win at this game. I totally believe that I could have made a successful career within that. It would have looked so different than what yeah. we're doing right now. Yeah. And I'm, the fact that I like get to sit beside you guys every day, like it makes it to oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm really still glad that I took this path. Right. But there's somebody out there like oh, who's no. hearing um, <laughs> that the only way to getting that freedom is, or like getting ahead in the ways that they're looking for is to go start your own business. And that's not necessarily true. That's yeah. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, sure. Definitely. Well, and I didn't, I mean, I didn't have any, I definitely didn't have a vision for like, where to go to like, well, I, I don't know. I just didn't have any yeah. other vision for like that. the upward mobility is there in those industries. The, the cost of entry is the same inside an existing into industry as it is like going out and starting a business. Mm -hmm. You have to, you have to demonstrate commitment. You have to like yeah, throw yourself into the thing. It's kind of like Tony Robbins talks about how like you've got your, you work your nine to five or, or and also uh, Gary V talks about it. you work your nine to five and then you go home, you eat, you see the kids and then you work your, whatever, you know, you're, you're eight to 11 or yeah, whatever you work like that your nighttime, you know, nine you, to 2 AM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like one that investing yourself. yeah. Yeah. And, but yeah. if you're investing yourself in yourself within an industry that you're an employee of, mm -hmm. I think you have a similar payoff. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and it's just like, and that's what it's actually about is yeah. like putting in the extra hours. Yeah. I, I don't remember what the stat is, but I, my understanding is like, uh, people who get, who work just 10 hours more a week, like just instead of 40 hours, 50 hours a week, mm -hmm. get paid something stupid, like 85% more than most people. Like it's just like huge payoff for just mm -hmm. a little bit of extra effort. And if you like really throw yourself into it, you can, you can get far wherever yeah. you are. Well, yeah. I think whatever industry you're in or whatever job, employee, entrepreneur, whatever, you know, like Jim Rohn, like Jim Rohn's like thing of like, you should work harder on yourself than you do on your job mm -hmm. is always going to like pay off. Mm -hmm like wherever you're at in that. And you should work mean, harder on yourself than, than you, you do, do on, on your, your job. On your job. What does he, what does he mean by that? It's like, um, like developing your skills, becoming more efficient, being ah, just like okay. constantly getting better, bettering yourself. Like preparing for your job. Yeah. Rather than like going in and doing the job. It's like, how do you go do the scripts at night? You know, like you know, practicing things and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as Josh, clarify this for me then. Because you're, you're, you're bringing up something regarding, like, um, if somebody's already, just the idea that they have to be, like, they have to become an entrepreneur or start their own business in order to, in order to actually attain, like, a certain level of success and more freedom and monetary, monetary mm -hmm. success even. Right. But just that they don't necessarily have to start their own business or company in order to do so, but. When you take that initiative, you get put in positions of management. And, and oversight within an existing business. That is what I believe. And, and um, yeah, I've seen this in all kinds of different companies I've worked for and stuff. Like if you, it's the people who are actually committed in those ways that, that get the promotions, get it. it maybe you have to make a lateral transfer. Maybe it's not even within your company, yeah. right? But maybe by developing yourself to such a degree, you can actually go get the management company at the other firm. Or something like, that. Yeah, yeah, at the other bank. Or well, whatever. it does seem like in the end run, a lot of times you wind up, you're jockeying for, maybe you're not, you're not like the entrepreneur that's the startup, but maybe that you're the, you are a stockholder or a major stockholder or, right? Like a lot of times you wind up in ownership of a right. business. And that's like the goal oh, yeah. is like, 
you want to be capitalizing on the ownership of the business that you're investing in and yes, working yeah. in. And, and it is really hard to, it's really hard to commit yourself on that level whenever you just get paid don't feel like or, you get the ownership or whatever. But what yeah. you find out pretty quick when you start a business is it costs you a whole lot more than you get in the early days, yeah. especially. What's well, kind of so, like Cardone says, like you're going to be underpaid for most of your life. You're going to be underpaid. And then there'll be a brief short window. If you work hard at and you work hard and keep after it, you'll be underpaid, underpaid, underpaid. And like, like the very end, you'll get overpaid for um, what you, you know, yeah. for what you are and what you do and invest in. The, and, like money, money and resources follow value. You have to provide the value on the front end. Mm -hmm. And until you provide the value on the front end, the money will never come. It's kind of like you're getting paid interest on your value. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So does that make sense? Does that answer your question there? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I always completely agree with it, but <laughs> I do understand what you're saying. Yeah. Well, because I think that there's context where it's just like, I mean, think of it this way. If, if the way that employment can work in a particular business is, is so much like your value your value can be perceived in as much as you have spent enough time at the place. Mm -hmm. Like that yeah. your value is less about like the, what you, what you do create the initiative that you take and the, like think of it this way is if, and this is part of the problem that uh, I'm certain people feel in their different workplace is that they're, they're going to have to be there a long time yeah. just to, just to actually be perceived as valuable right? because right. time, time yes. is, yeah. it's weird, but it's like time, time all of a sudden where that a person has spent at a particular business or a location, it can, it can, it can get to where it's, um, it's outweighing what should be valued. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that, that kind of wars against the whole Ray Dalio meritocracy like kind of thing. Right. Right. And, um, and that's when, when I say like, you may have to make a lateral transfer. Yes. Mm -hmm. You may have to make a lateral transfer. Yeah, right. Like Seth Godin talks about that in like, uh, I don't remember which book it is. Maybe a uh, Lynch linchpin, I think is the book that he wrote about like being uh, like you're, you're in your position. You need to be so integral that if they take you out of that position, then it all kind of falls apart. But what you, yeah. what he, like what he proposes is you try to build this value and you may not get the the money value early on. Yep. And, but what you have to do at that point is then you go out, you interview at another place, you get your, you, you get your count, you get your offer from that place where that's where you're actually going to see your value increase. And then you can take it back to your current employer. Yep. Then you present that to them. And it's like, Hey, they're, they're going to offer me this over here. And they see me as like providing value. Am I that important here? Or do I just need to go? Right. Yep. And that's kind of how you have like, and that's the marketplace we live in and like the way that jobs work now. And we're like our parents, they kind of grew up in a, um, uh, in a generation where loyalty and sticking with it and like yes. staying with that same company is going to pay off and you're going to get this pension. And that's really the pension in the mm. long run is how you yeah. get paid. That's not the way it is anymore. Now, like loyalty, if you are loyal, you're never going to get paid the value that you provide. You have to go out and, and make and I those think those are competing steam. ideas in yeah. the workplace. Yep. Well, it, in terms yeah. of like, not in terms of which one I would agree with. Sure. <laughs> just in terms of people's perception yeah. and the way they should handle yeah. a situation like that mm. is just, you know, well, employers need to keep this thing in mind. Like they need to be keeping like this, this whole thing in mind. Cause if you don't treat your employees correctly, like, frankly, it's kind of telling if you're running a business in a corporation and the, what's, what's actually valued there is much more weighted on time, time favoritism to that us. a person has been there yeah, as opposed to productivity. productivity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah that's right. Right. Because people are trying to measure loyalty in terms of like the time that they've been there yeah, as opposed to like having enough confidence that they are actually a good enough business to retain valuable employees <laughs> and like providing the employees with the kind of value yeah. and putting the employees in a position where they're producing enough value that they can give them enough of it mm -hmm. that everybody pays off. Which is crazy because it is, it is very, it's a high cost. It's high cost to have to acquire new employees. Very. Like it, it's yeah. very it's hard. much like more expensive. Retention is yeah. I don't know how we got on this guy. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, that's yeah. true though. Yeah. That's absolutely true. I mean, yeah, I, if I was going to say just a couple of things about me with getting started yeah. in real so, estate, yes, was yeah, basically I'm just, Sorry. I went, I would went to college. I'm thinking I'm going to be like a coach and I'm going to be a teacher, get a degree in history. 
you know, sometime around shortly after that, I discover that uh, I've got to put in a lot of time and I'm also <laughs> not really going to get paid extremely well for the time that I put into this. Um, but all the while I'm still part of, part of why I'm even interested. I was interested in like coaching and teaching was the value you could bring to the lives of the individuals you're involved with. Right. Totally different. I still get it from this. We're able to help people with this huge investment with their oh, yeah. lives and buying and selling right, property. Right. It's like, so I yeah. still, I, I still have that, right. You know, that was really important to me to experience there. And then there's, so I immediately shift into this. I've got to figure out a way. I've got to figure out a way to make some money with the job that I have, but it's, it's, I know that, Hey, I want to, I want to have a big family. I want to, I want to adopt. I want to be able to do all these different things that are, I know whatever I want to do that I think is important someday. It's going it, to, I want more time to do it and I want more, more money to be able to pour into whatever it is, mm-hmm. but not knowing exactly what that is. Right. But I know that I want those two things. So it's like, I get that, you know, I start working for a bank and, um, it's a few years into that and it's just, we've have, we've had a couple kids and it's just, I'm not going to make uh, as much money as I would like to as quickly as I would like to. Yep. Yep. And there's you, Josh has started the real estate business and then Jeremy was on board working with him as well. And I was so persuasive. That was it, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, there was this sounded, sounded promising. Might have overestimated a few things and and, and, under, and <laughs> underestimated a few others, but I definitely felt all those different circumstances um, lead me to a place where I'm thinking I've got to take the plunge and I've got to take whatever the risk is involved. I've got to be willing to take this risk. That is uh, we figure out the real estate business together. Mm. And so much of doing that successfully was us actually doing it together. Yep. It wasn't this, I'm just doing it, doing it by myself. I'm going to be dependent mm. upon myself. Like that sort of self-destructive mentality, you know, it's, I'm, I'm going to work with others to to get, to accomplish this. And so I I would have died without you. Oh man, it's the mutual, it's mutual. (laughs) It's just, I think we decided that you would have never started a business. I would. Yeah. Me personally, I would have never succeeded. The, the, (laughs) your, your being very, the dream and aspirations and oh, yeah. that sort of, I can see the future, man. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's there. I can taste it. Let's oh get my it. goodness. Well, gracious. it's so oh, yeah. interesting. It's what is one of the things that's interesting when we just talk about this right now is when you go to describing for you, how you've got this, the plan is very, you go into talking about just like embryo adoption and all these different like specific oh, yeah. multiple clinics where you're doing this. And I'm like, I, I think that sounds awesome. And I, I don't, I don't have a thing like that at all right. that I've discovered as like, this is, this is my dream and this is my goal and this is my big aspiration in the end. And it doesn't make sense to me how you can wake up every day without something like that. Like and it's just, it doesn't. No, process. and that, that's just it. I can, I can agree with, I can agree with the, the principles that like, they make sense to me that I've got to get more money and I've got to free up my time mm-hmm. if like to be able to give back what you want. Yeah. To be able to give back and accomplish a greater good for others. And it's, if I'm, I'm going to have to get money, I'm going to have to get more time to do that. Yep. So if I agree that those things are true, even though I don't know what the end game is, mm. then, you know, I don't have to know what that is for me personally. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I'm just, I'm certain that can be a very, I'm certain that can be a very crippling thing for people. It's just, Oh yeah. Cause you know. people like me will start saying like, well, the thing that fixes it for you is it like, it, but it's just like, <laughs> it's just like Tony and Gary in terms of yeah. like just totally yeah. different people. Why don't you just go be an like, NBA player? Why don't, to, you yeah. could still do it. <laughs> well, like, someday visualize it, Aaron, it. visual, put it on your dream board. <laughs> um, but it's like just different people are really wired so much differently where it's like, it, you just, you, you have to tap into like whatever it is that helps you wake up every morning and you have to get that right for yourself. That perspective, that mentality. And that perspective thing. for yourself. Yeah. But um, it's not going to look the same way for everybody. You don't have to have the big aspirations to, or whatever, to be able to get, you know, a thing built or something, you know. Most people, they actually change, I think. Yeah. I think yeah. even for most people, and I'm not saying that that would necessarily happen with you. I'm just saying for a oh, lot of people. it's not going to. Yeah. I promise <laughs> you. Yeah. I think for a lot of people, they change. Like, it, it actually yeah. changes over time. Yeah. Where it's just, I've got this big plan and idea that I want to accomplish someday. But 
just because it changes or you may not be clear on exactly what it is doesn't mean that you can't take the steps that you are assured of Mm -hmm. to be, to be, if I want to accomplish something that is this bigger thing, then you know what? I'm going to have to be willing to take the risk that's involved with this, take the plunge and actually the, the massive action, (laughs) take the massive action. Um, and then decide to actually be involved with like, yeah. for me, that's what it was, was real estate with you guys. So. I don't really looking back on it. I have no idea how we got you on board. It we was, had so little stability at that it point. Was, hey. I, I just can't <laughs> believe it. You are, you're a great get. Oh, uh, yep. yep. we, we all needed each other. Yeah. Still do, still do. But I, you know, for the most trying of times throughout that. It's, We've been through a few things together. Yeah. Just a few things. Well, I mean, it's, no, that's good. but, but it's, it's funny. Cause the thing I've learned about you is like, uh, the thing I think that motivates you is like wanting to max out what we've got and like not wanting to lose and like a fear of losing kind of thing, like a competitiveness. Hate losing. Hate losing. <laughs> it's like, you're our Michael. Yeah. yeah Jordan, it's, it's, not, uh, not Michael Scott. Hey, Michael listen. Jordan. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, Michael Scott. That was a different. I'm the Michael different Scott player. here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michael Scott. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's right. Yep. Um, I will say, like, I, I think probably two things that we have in our business that we value that that we have in our relationship, whatever, that I think a lot of people can get tripped up by in this whole process yeah. is like, we actually, even though we want to go build things with money we don't need money for us. So we don't care whether we have money today. Uh, Yeah. It's just not a. Listen, it's important. It's it's important to provide. It's important to provide. I like being able to buy nice things for my wife. Yeah, exactly. You've got to be able to provide for your family and, and that that's crucial. But, but to let money become this object that is supreme above all else. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Our household, like decreased in our income for several years. Yep. Uh, and got in a lot of debt. And like, it was just, it was a tough time. There were a lot of hard conversations where Casey was like, Oh yeah. So when do we quit on this thing? And I was like, no, 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 we're just around the corner. It's like, how many times are you going to tell me that? The promises we've made to our wives. <laughs> <laughs> but well, yeah. I think she was able to come along through that whole process because yep. it was never about us having money. It was never about us having status or whatever kind of thing. And so she was okay with it. Um, and so I know when we've had to have hard conversations about like, okay, we only have a limited amount of money in the business account and everybody needs to eat this month. How much money do you need? Like, do you have to have to survive? How much money do you have to have to survive? Like we're able to have a lot of those conversations, Uh uh, in, in the early kind of rougher days Yep. because when I don't, when I'm not making a transaction for the first six months, (laughs) You freeloader. Oh, yeah. Well, that's right. <laughs> You've made up way more for that. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but it's like, uh, you know, I had done some early deals and stuff, but I don't care that you are taking that money because I see it as the investment and where we're all trying to go together yep. instead of like, I need mine now so that I can go buy my car or buy my, do my thing or whatever. Yep. I don't think I've ever seen, I don't know of any of their businesses or like what we're in. Like the relationship we have, I don't think if I don't know of anybody else, maybe some families, but the families typically have a lot. It's a, it, there's a lot of very than, open communication about yeah. a lot, a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think anybody who's really high level successful business partners has to have that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like the ones otherwise you you just fail. Like I don't see how you do it how on you your don't own. have that. Yeah, but what's interesting yeah. too is like on the on the other side of that because there's there's like really great things about. Hey, let, what do we need and how we help each other? How do we serve each other? There's also this, and this is the tension that somehow we walk is like, there's also this way that you can like screw each other over without even realizing fair. it and not being fair. Mm. And like, we've that's had to right. have all kinds of hard <sighs> conversations, usually like yeah, no, right. brought on by Mr. Justice over here. Um, <laughs> just the perspective that you have on a lot of that stuff of like, uh, we have to balance this out and make this right. And, you know, um, that it's, it provides so much protection, even of our relationship with each other, because we know, well, we're not going to get away with like, you know, freeloading and ripping each other off. And so we're going to, you know, we have to work through that and figure out what's the, what, what makes it fair with each other. Yeah. What makes it fair? Where can we actually 
uh, bear one another's burdens in a way uh, that, you know, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing where I didn't, I didn't have transactions for the longest time. And so I just need help. You mm-hmm. know, it's just like right. I had what I'd saved up and then like a tax return I was going to get. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like, if you're not completing transactions and I don't get through that point, you know, and then there were, you now I could, I could totally, I could keep that to myself. Right. You know, I and could like keep suffer that to in myself. silence or something. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, and not look, there's a way in which I could, you could look at that and I could just be a freeloader. Right. And I just looking for right. a handout. And there's also a way in which we don't get through that and get to the other side of it. At least I know, I know I don't, you know, and my level of involvement with whatever the real estate business is right. would be this, it just fizzle out because I wouldn't last. Right. If I don't, if I don't actually get that help at the time. So, um, yeah, it's like needing to have money. Uh, we didn't, Money's not the supreme thing, right? You know, money's not the supreme thing. I think credit, credit for ideas. Yep. Um, like not having to be the guy who came up with the thing. Yeah. No, that's right. That's yep. right. You know, there because there have been so many ideas that we've had that uh, of either things to do or things to not do or whatever that have been like totally wrong. We have made so many stupid decisions <laughs> and like horrible <laughs> decisions, and uh, being willing to admit quickly when you screwed up because you're not so concerned about being so impressive and getting the credit or something like that, that you're like, okay, so we're not going to do that thing. We're going to move on and go this other direction. Um, yeah, that's right. And, and to be willing to be like, Ooh, you just had a really good idea and we need to do that thing. Yep. Like it requires both kind of this like openness to like exploring and a new thing and whatever, but also like, no, you can have really good ideas. No, they don't have to be for me. No, that's right. Like they don't have to be my ideas that win the day. We have to figure out a good mechanism for letting ideas win instead of just like doing whatever we feel like, but it do, they don't have to be my ideas or your ideas or your ideas. And no, we're all right. okay with that. And, and, yeah. and that's why it ends up being this blend. Like it ends up really being a, a cooperative effort. Like that's actually this corporate thing that we're building as a group. Mm-hmm. So, no, that's really good. It's cool. Anyway, I know there's like a bajillion other things that we could get into about mistakes that we made and formative moments and all kinds of stuff. We'll do that another time. That's probably enough for today. We'll do that another- um, <laughs> Remember that time when we would we would take, basically we would just send letters to people, telling them about their house and why it wasn't <laughs> right. Hand, handwritten critique of both their house and their listing. And of, of their listing presentation. Yeah. Oh, man. The good old days. Yeah. We'll get into that at we'll some point. We'll get that discussion so, another time for sure. Really no, built that's... our skill set with how do we know about uh, hey, we did learn. We learned a ton about why houses don't sell. When, yeah. So we do know Which a lot about that. It's a great plug for our website, why didn't your house sell dot com? if you want to know <laughs> why your house isn't selling. We have why a website not? about that. If you, so, if, you, if you do what we did there, you do lear- you'd learn – a lot about the market <laughs> in a very small amount of time just because oh, yeah. we're looking at yeah. so yeah. many houses. But oh, yeah. It's all about the journey, right, Josh? It's all about, about learning, yeah. the, the think education. Of what we learned, think of what we've learned in the process. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you of all people hate that idea? Anyway. Yeah. So I actually anyway. I really am sympathetic I to that. I, I like it. the I just, learning. I love learning. <laughs> yeah. I but, don't hate it. I just give you a hard time about I it. I love no. not knowing, not knowing. I love <laughs> failing. It's it's the best. <laughs> well, do we do we uh, give sufficient enough answer there for your friend who asked that question. I think so. Okay. Um, so, good. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a lot of, a lot of the pieces that you need to, to have perspective on. No, that's good. How good is this going to be? How terrible is it going to be? That's business. So that's good. Just have that hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, wonder and hope. Wonder yeah. And Chew hope. on that glass and stare into the abyss. Oh my gosh. Awesome. All right. Well, that's a wrap. See y'all. Thank See you. Ya. Thanks for watching The Maven Show. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for all the latest clips and episodes. Also, comment below with what you thought was the most interesting or helpful from this video. And if you want to help us out, please like and share our posts on social media. Thanks so much.